We're off. Okay. Um, hold on tight. Here goes. Whoops. Okay. Resume. All right. Here we go. In three, two, one. God, have you even looked around? This place is a labyrinth of bad choices. We're fresh out of private. The Morning Stream. We're not toys, we're action figures. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Morning Stream. It is Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian. Hello. 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 Look, it's a very, we got how many days? Go to Viva TMS Vegas, everyone. Let's take a look at the days. We have 61 days, 7 hours, 45 minutes, and 34 seconds as of of this reading uh, before the events of Las Vegas kick in. two months. I know. Oh, my gosh. I cannot stop sneezing. You got what, something well, in the air? You got a little, uh, what's going on? I think something in the air. I don't know what it is. Like, I had a, uh, it's like a little tickle inside my nose. Mm. And I tried blowing my nose like crazy yesterday trying to get it out, but it's it's some tickle. It's, it's just lo- some tickle in just there. Just lodged in there, whatever it is. Yeah. We yeah. got a dog whose uh, his eyes all goopy, her eyes all goopy, and we think it's because she sheds so much that her own hair has gotten in her eye and irritated oh, her eye. Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, one so, of the uh, one of the three dogs that we have here at the Johnson Kennel. I'm pretty sure that's not my problem. No, pretty sure. No, I don't think any <laughs> your, none of your hair has entered your your eye. I don't think uh, that's true, or my nose. For yeah, that it's probably or, a cat. I think it's it's because I do the thing where you know I got a big fluffy cat and she's sweet and I yeah. like bury my face in her fur and go <laughs> like that because you gotta you gotta do that. She's you, a big fluffy cat. You heard it here first, Brian. Motorboats his cat. So, I motorboats the cat. Yep. Yes. I think that's it. That is a thing, right? I'm not making that up. That's real. No, no, that is a thing. Well, I mean, not with in cats, this context, but... it's not the thing. But <laughs> yeah, that, is, that is the noise is usually associated with the, the boob related mo- motorboat. Got it. Okay. Making sure I got my terms right. Because uh, I'm never quite I'm The never only quite boob sure. involved here is the one doing the motorboating in this case. That's right. Uh, also, sure that's like, like a cat hair up my nose or something. Yeah, it's it could be. You never know. And I'm my, thing, my feeling is it'll probably just go away. Or maybe you got a little probably. winter allergies. I don't know. We got two inches of snow be. out of nowhere last night, like 2 a.m., just boof. Yeah, it is it is coming down right now. We're getting it. I'm watching the sidewalk slowly disappear into a oh, world man. of white. Ours came in, and literally it felt like it just went, blah, and like threw it all out at once, just blah, and covered everything and then left. It wasn't a long storm. It wasn't a yeah. drawn-out experience. It was just like right, a, but it was a barfing. Just enough. Yeah, just yeah. enough, and it annoyed me. Uh, anyway. Snow barfing. Yeah, so that's right. The reason I bring up that whole thing with the the Viva TMS Vegas dot com is because yeah. there's still some tickets. Please get in there, get those tickets. I found out today, Pacholik Pacholik is coming. Mike Pacholik is oh, coming. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I gotta I gotta thank that guy in person for his continued generosity. I mean, nicest guy ever. That really guy. is. Yeah, always very kind. I also saw uh, Gary from Landtronic, formerly of Landtronic, mm-hmm. Landtronics, formerly of Lot B, formerly of. Uh, what was the other thing he did? Uh, Batu. Oh, Batu. Uh, Black Square Post. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, he, the former, the former uh, scoundrel who who would teach you a game of uh, what's the card game? Shoot, it's uh, uh, ba- ba- uh, Dom Jot. Nope, that's Star Trek. Um, uh, uh, Sarlacc. No, that's the pit. It's, you play uh, Dom Jot. I don't remember. Yeah. Sabak, yes, Sabak. Sabak. All right, thank, thanks, Lasarge. It's funny. It's like it's it's like Sarlacc, but it's not. <laughs> no, it's not quite full Sarlacc. It hasn't yeah. gone full. You know Sarlacc. Who else is coming? Mm. I mentioned it before, but uh, Uncle George and Aunt Bear. Yeah, we get to finally uh, meet again. I guess because I did meet him, yes. I just didn't really. Their their significance was not yet known to me then. Right, right, right. Now that you exactly when you finally meet them now, it'll be like, oh, you're Aunt Barb. That's right. Nice to finally meet you, Aunt Barb. That's right. It'll be it'll be great. Can't wait to see. You her. guys all need when you see her. You go, oh, you're Aunt Barb. Oh, so you're Aunt Barb, yeah. Just talk like you're straight out of Minnesota when you see her. Okay. Right, exactly. Got a little Arby's on you. Yeah. Um, I realized something last night. I, I it's a long story why yeah. this is even happening, but you know I kind of went on a little bit of a tear with the old medical shows. I watched Saint Elsewhere, yeah, Saint Elsewhere, yep, a couple then, seasons yeah. of that, and anyway, I ended up going down this road of like, what do I miss? And I realized I kind of missed, I miss ER. 
I miss mm-hmm. that show. And the reason I think I miss it, like St. Elsewhere, they didn't hire nothing but pretty people. There are some pretty people. Oh, yeah. It was exactly. But yeah. it was a lot of uglies, too. There were some normals. I shouldn't say uglies. There were normals on it. <laughs> and I like that when a show right, will cast right. normals. All these new shows, you kids today with your, your Chicago... Hope or not hope, a uh, Chicago oh, yeah, Med no, or you're, whatever. Yes, your Grey's Anatomy. I mean, you want to talk about a parade of pretty people. It is Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, I can't deal with that. I hate that, yeah. actually. It drives yeah. me crazy. Do you do works behind the uh, the counter for ER? Uh, uh, sure. No Wiley's handsome, and Sherry Stringfield is pretty, and and uh she's kind of pretty uh, in a normal way though right she's she's girl next door pretty right she's she is believable as as you know someone in that role as, yeah. as opposed to yeah um everybody looking like uh iggy whatever her name is on uh, uh gray's anatomy uh, uh knocked um, up uh, uh just uh just 27 dresses um yes yeah her anyway that yeah. that girl can't think of her name why can't i think of her name we get to see a fake birth of her area unit in that for in that uh <laughs> that knocked up movie you remember that that was shocking yes, <laughs> Catherine heigl that's it Jeez. heigl yeah Catherine heigl anyway uh <laughs> yeah, it was like a prosthetic like fake vagina in that movie anyway yeah uh so i like that about it it just gives it a more of a yes. raw kind of thing and also back then this is a time in the 90s mid 90s we're talking 95 that show started when you started to see all these actors come through that you would see in everything from then on yeah. They were in. I watched an old lady die in a very sad episode. That was also Seinfeld's grandmother. Uh, I saw another dude. Oh, who was it? Um, oh, the guy. The guy from Alias. The bad guy. Um, oh yeah, uh, the older guy. Right. Little shrimpy um, dude with the mm-hmm. frowny face. <laughs> I can't give his name. He's a big deal in the fur in the second season. This guy. Um, <laughs> you and I really. One of these years, we have to figure out a way. To go work the red carpet at like one of the uh, major award shows, we'll, yeah. you know, we'll be standing there with whoever it is from E and and from Bravo or not Bravo or Extra or whatever. I remember and, you uh, from that thing you were in. Oh my God, you're the you're the little shrimpy frowny dude. Yes, yes. right. You were on Alias, I think, right? And was it Victor Kiriakis? No, that's that guy from a daytime uh, soap opera. Wait a minute, what was your name? Like that would be, we would do a killer job. At the E red carpet, yeah, be, let's do it. And it wouldn't even be a shtick. It would just be us like, oh, you, we yeah. know you. Yeah, we would totally do that. I, uh, but anyway, so it's like this just, you know, whole thing. And yes, yes, George Clooney is a handsome actor, okay? Sure. He's still on yeah. the show at this stage. Yeah. And, but he's not handsome in the traditional way. The show doesn't, the show doesn't parade him around like he's just Mr. Good Looking, He's super flawed. He's got all kinds of problems. He's yeah. basically a, you know, an alcoholic ready to pop. He's he's basically Tony Stark. Kind of <laughs> yeah. All the money. <laughs> yeah. He's Tony Stark with an okay car and a decent apartment. I mean, the that's confidence basically confidence level, you know, the charisma, the, uh, yeah, all that stuff. And anyway, I just forgotten how much I like it, and I just think the design of the show, like the core of it, is really sound, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun to go back to. Plus this. There's that cool sound it makes. Right, it's Crichton, right. Crichton deal at the very like the pilot was uh, Crichton, right? All Crichton, the whole thing. All the whole Crichton. thing was. All... I thought he just like like basically said, "Yeah, here I'm setting this up. You guys take it from here." Kind of he, thing. He created the well. The, he's credited for the rest of the series he's as the creator. showrunner, but yeah, I yeah. How, what his involvement really was. Yeah, I don't know if he's just inspiration or what, but but anyway, he uh, 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 it's really good. And I was watching some of it, and I realized something about it. And, yes. and this kind of show in general. In the 90s, when I would watch a show like this, it would stress me out because every two seconds, it's like, we'll have a personal moment where Noah Wiley's talking to somebody about, you know, oh, yeah, my mom, she's she's coming in town, something, something. And then somebody would kick the door open. Malik or a character like that would kick mm-hmm. the door open and go, we got 15 kids coming in with their heads off. Uh, f- four minutes, they're in count, you know, and it's the middle of a snowstorm and it's like, Dun, 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 and everybody freaks yeah. out, and they all got to scramble, and they're all talking words like, "Give me a 50 cc uh, flamage with a zip zap zoopy dop," you know, like all the medical talk and everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I realized that what I like, what I didn't like then, used to it used to stress me out in the nineties. Sure. Yeah. I would just get oh, get anxious, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is scary, and and all that. Now, I find that stuff weirdly calming. I like, mean, it's not that far a stretch it. from. Choppers, we got choppers, <laughs> incoming choppers. It really is like, yeah, you know, 
It is that guy, right? It's basically that. Same shit, different war. Yeah. Yeah. Except, <laughs> but I mean, it's like that level of stress. Like, oh, hey, everything's going well. Pump pass me a little bit more of that moonshine. Oh, you gonna go to, gonna go to Tokyo for a little R and R this weekend? Yeah, I think I am. Oh, choppers, choppers, choppers. Oh, yeah. Oh, I missed my Tokyo trip. Yeah. Oh, and, and a whole an entire front line of horrible murder has happened, and now they're all. Now we have to get serious in the operating room. Like, there's right. It definitely has that. And for whatever reason, I kind of maybe I'm just nostalgic for it because that was must see TV Thursdays, right? It was, was part, yeah. I guess the tail end of that or or close well, to it. It was the it was the closer, right? Because I mean, you had yeah. your uh, your your seven o'clock starter, mm -hmm. which was uh, sometimes what like a suddenly Susan or a Boston Common or a Caroline in the City. Yeah. And then your seven thirty, your lead into Seinfeld with that pressure. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's a Frasier. Frazier. Or Frazier was Cheers, your start. In 95, Cheers was done, Yeah, Cheers right? was still... I think I think Cheers was done... There was there was some overlap, I'm sure, between Cheers and ER. Okay. So there might have been... So we may have Can't gone Cheers... can Cheers without ER. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we may have gone Cheers, then Seinfeld, then... Yeah, I think you had your... your I think you had your Frazier at the top. Yeah. And then you had your... We're really trying to push this new NBC sitcom mm, yeah. with... With uh, this southern lady, uh, <laughs> that comedian. You talking uh, about um, not not designing women? Um, not designing women. It was the oh, she, we just oh. saw her on on Walking Dead or something. Uh, oh, Grace on fire. Grace, Grace on fire. Not Grace, Grace on, on fire. fire. <laughs> it's not Grace on fire, is it? Grace under fire. Under fire. <laughs> 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 what, was, what was that woman's name? Because we just saw her on like Walking Dead or something. But it, or, so, so you had that. Your seven thirty was your was your your sitcom that NBC is really trying to push because it's the lead into eight o'clock Seinfeld. Right. And then it's, there's that like, oh, we've got this treasured hammock of entertainment between these two great ten poles of Seinfeld and ER. Yep. What are we gonna stick in it? I know the single guy yep. or Boston yep. Common or. You're totally right. That's exactly yeah. what it was, and that was must-see TV, and then you ended with ER because that was before right. the news. Brett and Butler, thank you. Brett Butler. Stories. Yeah, she had a dude's name, or a, what I considered a dude's name back then. Yeah, you know? And a dude's job. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then Friends, right. So Friends friends took over the, like, Frasier moved to Tuesdays, and then Friends slipped in there, and it was, again, your, your top-of-the-hour tent poles and your little NBC hammocks of what are we trying to fit in there now yeah. is, uh, between that. That was your standard Thursday night. And I yep. think this reminds really me was. of that, and I used to tune into that every every week, and I used to think it was great. Yeah. And at yeah. that time, let's see, ninety five, I had a I had a baby, I had a little tiny mm -hmm. Taylor, mm -hmm. and I was holding her and feeding her probably while this was going on. So yeah. I have a lot of nostalgia for it. So it's just playing in the background uh, while I get work done. Like yesterday, just had just kind of had it on, and it's very good. I think that show's worth returning to. I think it, like most shows, they find their feet right around season two. Uh, and and it sort of kicks off. I only have one problem. There was an episode where Jerry brought a copy of Doom uh, to the to the desk there to the clerk's Jerry desk. Jerry was his name. Yes, right. Yeah, was... yeah. Can I always forget Jerry. his name too? The guy from the dude that he was. He's from all sorts of stuff. But anyway, a freaking linebacker looking dude. Again. Yeah, big guy. <clears throat> he was from uh, Parker Lewis can't lose. I always remember from that. But anyway. <laughs> Okay, but he. <laughs> I did, believe you. <laughs> did you ever watch Parker Lewis Can't Lose? You never saw that show. I liked it the first time when it was called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's a fair point. It's a fair <laughs> point. I mean, you know, they even yes, tried. Yes, I did. I did try watching Parker Lewis Can't Lose, and it was like, mm, yeah, I see what they're going for here. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here's but here's my memory. I I remember him. I remember his character name. This is so stupid because I can't remember anything else today. But I remember his name was Kubiak. It was his last name. Oh, really? Oh, funny. Wow. Yeah, why well, well, yeah. I remember that. That's stupid. Anyway, Jerry's Even there. DJ says, yeah, he played Koob. Yeah, <laughs> so Koob. It's a very memorable uh, character. Uh, Kubiak was for... a great character. I liked him a lot. Yeah. And that guy's yeah. done all kinds of cool stuff, including in recently he was in a World of Warcraft expansion as like a big bad guy. He does all kinds of voice work now. Yeah. Anyway, oh, but I'm watching that. He brings Doom to the, not the office, to the, to the ER, and they're playing Doom. We're talking classic, you know, PC uh, sure. pixelated doom and they start talking about it like they're like they know what they're doing 
but they say things that just aren't true. So they're playing it. They're going, oh, sure. oh you're going to die unless you go get the bulletproof vest. And I went, Doom didn't have a bulletproof Not vest. Not a thing. Not a thing. <laughs> there's an there's an armor uh, thing, yeah. but yeah. that's not what you said. And then somebody goes, "You should use the BFG 2000." And I went, <laughs> "It's not 2000. Uh, you've got that wrong." <laughs> so whenever a show does shit like that, it, yeah. it takes me out so bad. And I'm sure there's that, a million medical things. Like if Jerry Tolbert sure. was watching the show, oh, he'd be like, yeah. Yeah. Her "Eyes would roll so hard they'd come back around the other way." Right. Right, but I was so annoyed with that episode, so I had to skip that, that one. Was, but. That was their episode that was like because everyone was kind of hooked on it. It was distracting and stuff. It was yeah. basically their equivalent of the Star Trek: The Next Generation, cones and loops. Yeah, uh, yeah. game that everybody gets hooked on. Yeah, <laughs> or one of the uh, what was the deal? Who was in that? That was famously in that. Um, uh, it was uh, Ashley Judd. J- Ashley Judd. That's the, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, one of the Judds was in there doing one her Judds, Judds, doing Judd business. Yeah. Doing Judd things, uh, just judding, just judding, just judding around. Yeah, by the way, we talked about T- Parker Lewis and, of course, the the horrible, horrible Ferris Bueller's Day Off TV show. That was real bad. Yeah. In 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 you know, but uh, in the movie, you had Jennifer Grey playing Ferris's sister. Mm-hmm. She got the car. He got a keyboard, <laughs> or he got a computer. Um, <laughs> In the TV show, do you remember who played his sister? No, I remember. I only remember as Cloris Leachman was in it briefly. That's all I remember. Okay, uh, Jennifer Aniston was his sister. Oh, really? In that, yep. And the two of them would later play sisters or rivals or whatever it was on Friends. She was the guy that uh, that she left on the altar. That that uh, Rachel left at the altar. Who he ended up marrying was the Jennifer Grey character. Oh, I think, right? The uh, yeah. Doug or whatever. Not Doug. Yeah, whatever his name was. <laughs> whatever yeah. it was. The doctor guy, though. He was like a doctor. The doctor. Yes. Right. Yeah, I remember that. Good thing Claire's not yeah. here. She'd be losing her mind about friends. Oh, she would, yeah. Trivia. Exactly. More friends trivia. Can we have more, please? Here in Ireland, it's our favorite <laughs> show. Um, yes. you know, Barry, that is it Barry? Might be Barry. Barry, yes, Dr. Barry. Yeah, Barry. Thanks, Wahooga. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, well, anyway, ER yeah, is great. Anyway, I ER. recommend it. It's on Hulu, and uh, it's, uh, they really kick, it really kicks in season two. I think it's an excellent drama. Like, it's just actually really mm-hmm. good and holds up. There are some things about it that maybe are a little dated, but for the most part, yeah, it's and believable. Juliana Margulies was supposed to die in the pilot, and she became one of the most popular characters on that. Thing. She became huge, yeah, and she's very yeah. good in it. And she also is one yeah. of those people who I don't look at and go, oh, perf- what a hottie. I look at her and go, what a, a very beautiful, distinct looking person. Like, that's mm. why I think this show's better than most of these. Mm-hmm. Everyone's oh, really? just. I think she's a hottie. She, I mean, she's good looking, but she's not like drop dead, like model. Oh, yeah. To me, no, forget that. Like, uh, Sopranos is like, oh, is this a Juliana Margulies episode? All right. Excellent. Yeah, but you know what I mean? She's not the. Yeah, she's not I these she's, kinds on the Chicago she's not med model, thing. Like, she's not uh, the supermodel. Um, uh, over over made up kind of beauty right she's, uh, right yeah. even noah wiley's kind of a dork like he's good yeah. looking but he's yeah. a dork and and it helps the character to be less uh, more of a mm-hmm. dork and less of a perfect human being mm-hmm. i don't know i'm into it mm-hmm. uh okay enough er for now let's talk about yeah. uh crawley mccreepers wrote in I don't okay. think this is. A, right. I don't think this is his real birth name. His Christian name. No, but. it's not. Not Carly McCreepers. Okay. No, All right. No, I don't think so. But maybe you know whatever mileage may vary. He says, "Dear sure. Spider and Cobweb, beneath the veil of twilight, I, a humble creature of silk and shadow, reach out to thee, guardians of the spoken lore, seeking to bridge the worlds of human and spider with threads of peace and comprehension. Tis with a gentle heart." and a spirit of goodwill that I impart unto thee, Carter, scion of wisdom and curiosity, and Scott, her guiding star, a device of such ingenious craft, it belies the marvels of our age. Known amongst the dwellers of the overworld as, quote, my critter catcher, unquote. This artifact possesses the remarkable ability to ensnare my kin and I in tendrils of benevolence without harm or fear, and unlike the humble cup, affords dignity for our species. And there's a link to Amazon where you can buy this. It says, yeah. uh, I await a friend veiled in the night, eager for a future where our paths cross in respect and friendship, entranced by the woven discourse nonetheless. 
Crawly McCreepers. So we've so, talked on the show about how my daughter will constantly save spiders. That's what this is about. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I think this was intended for the Monday show. This is why you can't have two shows, Scott, that, that are spelled TMS. No, this isn't for us. Look, Dear Spider and Cobweb, uh, uh-huh, Entranced by uh-huh. the Woven Discourse. Oh, that's, 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 yeah, yeah. that's, no, no, no. Uh, I love the you, show, though. Start with, that, start with that first line again. Dear Spider and Cobweb. Oh, the C. Yeah, I guess so. But, but, <laughs> but this because. is, yeah. But nobody says love the show, though, on that show. Well, they should start. Also, this came because to TMS. Somebody, this came to my TMS email. I should mention that. Yeah, because they think it's the Monday show. This is, <laughs> here's the, the, somebody already sent us these spider catchers right here. Oh, yeah. That's it right there, isn't it? That's it right there, yeah. Here, chat. Look. Look at it. Sorry, do I need to gaze, again? gaze upon it. Oh, yeah. Show that, Brian. Look at it. See, look at that thing. It looks like, ready? It's, it's fireworks. Oh, wow. Do it again. Oh, God bless America. I didn't do it too quick. <laughs> Ooh, I'm supposed to say, ah. Oh. Uh, exactly. So this thing is. Yeah, that's, uh, a, that's, an S, that's an S and C. That's a Scott and Carter. Yeah, but, but it came to the morning stream at gmail.com. Oh, I don't have an email right. for the other show. So. Oh, well, that's why. Yeah. Well, that might be why. Yeah. The point is, we brought it up here before, and the idea is, yeah, we hey, have talked about, yeah, if you guys want to be nice to spiders, here's a relatively inexpensive way to do it 22.95 and it can be yours all right that's cool very it's a very cool device i've used it many a time it helps me pick up the spider so i can put it on a hard surface and stomp on it it's very very handy <laughs> you can take it out of your I front can pull porch pull it out of the carpet yeah and then put it on the hardwood floor perfect <laughs> I'm kidding i hope carter's not listening to that no she's <laughs> off to getting a tattoo this morning i believe oh, oh you're really? here right oh, cool. now when are you going when's your tattoo Later. Later. <laughs> she's the, she's in the other cubicle. You couldn't see her from where you're at. Yeah, I just can't. It's, I have a wall there. It's like a, what is this thing? It's like a Japanese changing wall? Mm-hmm. Whatever that is. It folds. You get it at Ikea. It's like a semi-translucent. Oh, yeah, like a, uh, right, like one of those. Right. Yeah. In, in old TV shows, you'd see stockings draped over them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it has a kind of a boudoir sort of vibe to it, That's right. but uh, That's right. in this case, it's uh, just does, a... Caduce asks, uh, does it hurt the spider? It does not hurt the spider. No, it's, it's very... That's it's, the whole point. It's these yeah, little it's soft. soft fingers that are like um, stiffer than fishing line, but that sort of material, like a thin plastic. Yeah, fiber. you're just you're just picking it up with a soft touch is all. And then, yeah. and then and they, I assume, well, the spider they show in the Amazon listing is huge. Is it? <laughs> oh, it's so big, Brian. You got to see this. Look at this thing. Hold on. Okay. I'll send you an uh, image. Oh, um, are you talking about the one that's next to the next to it in the picture? Um. Well, no. This one's like in its grasp. Um, oh, gotcha. Here you go. Okay. It's in our, it's our Discord. See that? Oh, geez. Well, that's funny. Dude. That's clearly a plastic spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It doesn't look real at all, does it? Yeah, no. It's definitely... Uh, it's big, though. <laughs> look how big. I don't like how big it is. That freaks me out a little bit. Yeah, that is a little bit big. Jeez. I don't and no one's see. like, yeah, somebody's going to say, all right, well, we've got this spider. Let's go ahead and get on the other side of this and take this picture. Yeah. I don't I, I don't like it even when it's fake. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Crawly McCreepers. We also got another email from Michael who wrote okay. into the morning stream at gmail.com and said the following. <laughs> this one is definitely for us. Hi, guys. On definitely TMS, for us, yeah. On TMS <laughs> recently, Scott read a news story about a woman returning a two-year-old couch to Costco simply because she had grown tired of it. That reminded me of an experience from a couple of years ago. I live on the Gulf Coast. I'm so sorry. Actually, I like it down there. I take it back. <laughs> you're always at risk, though, down there. You, you know, hurricane yeah. season comes around. You're yeah. just like, oh, man, freaking uh, hope this I isn't the year. I uh, loved Bradenton. I love Sarasota. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a very good friend in Tampa. I like I like Biloxi. I like yeah. Um, yeah. Gulfport. It's very nice. Sure. Uh, you got casinos now in both those places. So. Yeah, not very good. No, they're not. They're not like <laughs> Vegas casinos. They're, they're not, not like Vegas. Great. Vegas spoils me. Yeah. yeah, Vegas spoils us all. Anyway, I live in the Gulf Coast. We have to deal with the occasional hurricane coming through and knocking out uh, power. Several years ago, days after one such event, I was walking into a Lowe's and noticed a sign on the door that read, "Quote: All generator sales are final." Unquote. Apparently, there were people buying generators in preparation for the approaching hurricane and then trying to return them several days later after the hurricane had passed and power had been restored. So they were trying to, you know, get the benefit of the thing and then return the thing. Yeah, at first, yeah. I was irritated at the idea that people would uh, try such a thing. Lowe's is not in the generator rental business. But then I giggled <laughs> inside at the hope 
that those who thought they had been so clever as to buy a generator for just a few days had in fact bought it forever. Moo! -ha -ha -ha, he says. Excellent. Love the show, Michael. Yep. Both of these reads today were very um, dramatic. dramatic. Very dramatic. Yeah. yeah. Like an ER episode. For sure. <laughs> don't, 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 don't. I do. I, I love that. Song. There's something about it. There is, yeah. It's really good. It's one of the best music. It's one of the best drama themes. I'll put it up there, like top five. It's really good. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. Mm -hmm. And it's got that part in the middle where Eric LaSalle gets to the floor and does a fist yes. pump. Like a little, like a successful, like a yeah. celebratory uh, fist bump. Yep. That guy's pissed yeah. all the time, by the way. All the time. He is. Oh, Eric LaSalle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's a mad, he's a mad yeah. hatter. Um, all right. Well, that's <laughs> that's it for that. Oh, uh, I, real quick. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. One more thing about ER. I, I captured this yesterday to bring it on the show, sure. and I just totally spaced oh, yeah. it. Uh, and I put it on social. So, Brian, you may have already seen it, but I have not yet. No. I put it on social. What am I? Fifth? What am I? Five hundred? Put it on. Put on social. Okay. So this animated GIF is uh, Noah Wiley and Eric Lasalle exchanging a glance. <laughs> okay. This this right here. If I could. Sum up the first two seasons of ER. This gif is this. This is it. <laughs> That's right, because he was he was the intern under Eric Lasalle's charge, right? Like yeah, basically. Yeah. And Eric, who plays Doctor Benton, is pissed at him constantly. Yeah. And Noah yeah. Wiley's always doing this double take, and like he thinks he's being smart, but he's not. Like this is the essence of season one and two, right there. <laughs> that's great anyway sorry everyone at home who can only listen and not see that gif i put up that's right yeah it's the two of them looking at each other and and one and noah's smiling until he sees that eric lasalle is looking at him and then he stops yeah and eric lasalle dude that guy he's pissed he's good he doesn't have his soul glow uh -oh. afro that he had in uh <laughs> coming to america but uh i always forget that was him <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a what a difference! What a change! Of, <laughs> yeah, what a difference. <laughs> quite a different role. Yeah. It does not play the same character even close. All right, um, hey, how about we inform the public as well as entertain them? Uh, sure. Uh, with a little bit of this, right? Why can't I find the news there? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Breaking yes, news. GD Sara says, fun fact, putting house spiders outside doesn't save them. They die anyway because they're not supposed to be outside. I, I question that. It's not like we're domesticating spiders in the house. <laughs> right. They came <laughs> they came from life. there inside, right? Exactly. They started the spiders in the house are outside spiders that came into out to the inside spiders. Yeah, I, I I'm with Brian on this. There's no there maybe there's an exception we don't know about. Maybe probably I, some some exceptions, sure. I mean, you know. But. Maybe maybe it have to be somewhere where they've been living indoors for a long time, but the way that works is they come here because it's warm in the winter or whatever. Yeah, because they found a little opening and it's like, oh, I'm getting out of the rain into the nice dry house. Yeah. And guess what? Same predator outside, other spiders. Yeah. As they yeah. Are inside. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I don't know if I buy that. That's I know that's yeah. true of like, you know, your pet snakes and your birds and your stuff like that. They're domesticated yeah. animals, but I don't think spy we Yeah, maybe there are and who knows, maybe there are, are quote unquote domesticated house spiders that only know how to live in a house, but Anyway, I had to draw attention to that. It it, it caught my attention. And what's, we love you, what's a spec? What's a uh, spider expert? What do we call them? They're not entomologists um, or or uh, not, not ornithologist. Uh, um, arachno arachnithologist. Oh, oh, arachnithologist. Is that right? There's another arachnithologist. There's another. <laughs> Judy Sarr says science disagrees. Okay, well maybe <laughs> maybe she does know. Uh, well, look, I'm, uh, we're arachnithol. It's arach arachnist. Oh, Entomology. it's okay. You're right. I think so. It's here. I'll play the thing. Whoops, that's muted. Sorry. I'll do it again. Arachnologist. Arachnologist. Oh, arachnologist. Okay. Arachnologist. 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 I didn't prep. <laughs> Arachnological. Oh, he's got another. We got three of them. Arachnological. Here's that's an adjective, and here is his name. Oh no, Oxman. Arachnology. Dead. Oh no. What do we do? Arachnologist. <laughs> well, anyway, where was I? Oh, news. Time for the news. Brought to you by... We Hate Good Movies. It's a podcast where in a group of three movie lovers, Dallin, Spencer, and Micah, take on another first-year student and try to convince them 
that <laughs> objectively phenomenal movies are ruined by major flaws. On the latest episode, Micah, Dallin, and Spencer try to convince returning guest Annie that the cult classic Fight Club doesn't live up to the hype. Look for We Hate Good Movies on Podbean or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows. Mm. Now, one of these people is uh, Red Fraggle's kid. It's, red fra- it's, a, it's a fraglet, yes. One yep. of these people is a red fraglet. Yeah, it's your job as listener to figure out which one. Okay. That's right. Listen to their voices and see if you can place it. The um, uh, <laughs> I listened to this episode about Fight Club. This one personal to me because I put Fight Club up as one of my as one of my five or so favorite movies, and uh, um, I I struggled at the very beginning, and then they won me over. They because uh, you can tell there's like a there's a a playfulness about the whole thing, right? Like right. they really do like fight club, but they're going to be the, the, the devil's advocate or the master debaters and, and try and convince somebody that, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that fight club is not a good movie because of these. Have they done fury road flaws? Do you know if they've done? Ooh, that I don't know. I think maybe they need to have you on as a guest for fury road. Mm. <laughs> not sure. Oh, I could take fight. It fight uh, scene yeah, yeah i don't know if i can take it or not if i mm-hmm. hear anyone talk smack about my favorite film although yeah. it is dune yeah. week so i don't i don't have to think about much else but dune this week so. right you can you can put uh mad max free road on the uh uh the the back burner for a little while yeah. while we focus on dune yeah and you're gonna oh, I'm so excited you're gonna see it thursday right I'm seeing it Thursday night. Yep, I'm seeing it Friday opening night. Cannot the uh, Alamo Draft House has uh, new new foods like a, a hummus plate that's some sort of like arrakis <laughs> worm food, <laughs> something like that, some sandworm chow or something like that. It's, sure, uh, it should be interesting. That makes sense. Why wouldn't you go all in? Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, Dr. Calhoun finds some found some stuff. Let's see this. New scientist. Sorry, this this feels like it's it's important enough to to make sure we cover. All is this right. the do spider, spiders the spider release thing, outside? Right? Yeah. What's that? It's the spider. The thing. spider thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So, do house spiders released outside survive or navigate back? This is interesting. Oh, first, allow me to turn off my cookies because I'm not going to allow all the cookies. Only Reject allow the cookies all. you need. Just some of the cookies you need. That's it. By the way, I think the it's hilarious that... that when I go to a website that talks about. Uh, diabetic stuff and sugar intake that mm-hmm. you have to approve a bunch of cookies to use their website. I think that's funny. <laughs> that's that's a little irony, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't that's like really that at funny. all. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Uh, all right, yeah, it says the only place to release a house spider. That's kind of the TLDR at the top. The only place to release a house spider is a house. That's their habitat. So there you go. But what do you know? How do, what's a house spider? Because I've had black widows in here, and I know those live outside too. What's a house yeah. spider? What does that even mean? I think that's the thing, right? I think you have to identify whether or not they are a spider that can live outside and is used to foraging outside for its for its uh, food or if it's something that's, you know, getting used to just eating uh, fiber bar, fiber one bar crumbs from the inside of the house. And that's the only thing it can, it can uh, live on. Okay. I mean, I, I look, I'm here to learn new things. If this is the case, yeah. I just need to know what a house spider is because that to me is too broad of a definition. It's like yeah, house exactly. Spider. So, There's a spider uh, in my house. Does that make it a spice? A spice? A, a house spider? House spider? Spice powder? A spice powder? <laughs> is that the outer. is that a spice it's girl? Outer spice. Yeah, it's outer <laughs> outer spice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the long missing spice girl. Um, so let's see. What's the other field? I'd also caution that removing spiders from a home with specific temperature and humidity, humidity into an environment that may be drastically different, and that's where it cuts off uh, from Dr. Calhoun's thing. So okay, all right. Well, you know, Dr. Uh, Calhoun. I, here we, we go. Have, yeah. Uh, other spiders, like cobweb spiders and cellar spiders, tend to do well in our homes for their entire life. In this case, they can be left alone, but if removed from the house, they will often find the nearest area that is suitable and do their best to survive. Yeah, I don't mind if he becomes a garage spider or a sure. Um, Who cares? A window well spider. That's totally fine. Be be a window well spider, and you get some warmth and safety, and and eat the the bugs that uh, fall in there. And yeah. yeah, be my neighbor's house spider. How about that? Uh, so, so, uh, Jeannie Saris, uh, thank you for correcting us. We always love the, we always love the general corrections, yeah. but what would you recommend saying, well, you're going to die outside anyway. So 
<laughs> I mean, the problem you, is I can't have one cla- to a different part of the house. Jesus. Right. And I cannot have them crawling on my face. Also, they don't oh. know English and they don't follow rules. So if I say to the spider, the furnace room is yours. Right. Exactly. Stay out of the living room. <laughs> then, ha- yeah. How can I ensure that that will happen? You know, That's right. with a wife, I have a wife who is a full on arachnophobe. She can't do it. So how do I how do I protect her from the the wiles of a spider? I don't I, know exactly because Carter takes them out takes all of them outside, right? She loves she them and them takes them outside if she them. can. Yeah, she tries to let them all escape. But maybe if yeah. we've been doing that wrong, I, you know, I'm happy to to tell her that maybe that sure. they won't, can't survive out there. I don't know. What do you Does think she of that, Carter? Spider? Is Here, that what happens? You know what, like Carter? Get on that mic for a second, right there. Let's have this conversation. Okay. If it turns out that house spiders are meant to be in a house. Oh, I would keep. I know that they're meant to be in the house. Okay, so so, so I would you, keep them so, in the house. Mom won't really? allow it. Okay, what Brian? Go, go ahead. Your what would question. you? What would you like? Okay, would you just oh, move them to another good. part of the house? Here, hold on. Or I'm what gonna, do you do? I gotta wire you, uh, her up. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Hang on, hang on. She doesn't have headphones. All right, here you go, Carter. Okay, so Brian, ask your question again. All right, so you want to keep them in the house? What do you do with them? Then, if you pick up a spider in the house, what part of the house do you move it to? Yeah, probably like we have a storage room. That I would put them in. You'd store them in a storage well, room. There's, lots of hi- there's a lot <laughs> of hiding spaces spiders. in there. <laughs> My point is, if a spi- spiders don't get caught, you have spiders in your house either way. Yeah, that's true. Yes, right. So yeah, right. I would give them a space where they can go hide again. Yeah, but if okay. but they don't they don't follow the the rule. If you say this is your place to hide in. They don't go, oh, okay, thanks. I'll keep that in mind. No, I'll stay on my side of the tracks. On instinct, they're going to go and hide. Like, they're not. The fact that you see any spiders is super rare. <laughs> well, that's true, I guess. Yeah, that's true. They're usually like behind the walls. They're behind the walls, Scott. They're you in can't the walls. See them. Don't but tell now you mom. put them in the storage room where, you know, your dad's going to go looking for paper clips someday and mm-hmm. reach into a box and, uh, oh, here's paper clips. No, it's a, it's a spider. Yeah, this is fair. I, Look, I'll, I'm saying I respect your desire to save them, but if it turns out us letting them go is killing them. Here's the thing. What? They have a higher chance of living if I let them go than if I just smush them. Well, that's well, true. Yeah, 100%. So. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, feel like I feel like better chance. they have an it's, exponential it's better chance. Certainly better odds. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that's a fair point. Now go back to whatever you were doing, and good luck with your tattoo. Bye now. It got canceled. You know what I do? It got canceled. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm not, the weather. I, yeah, oh. the weather. This tough weather is really. Yeah, it really is a good tattoo in the snow. You know what I do? I'm gonna 3D print a little house. Yeah. And uh, and it'll be the spider house, and I'll have it uh, on the side by the garage, around the like behind our fence. And when we catch a spider, I'm going to put in some little house, Aww. and it'll still be a house spider. Yeah. It'll just be in its own house. It'll have its own house. And well, that- if I get into that house, it totally can step on me, <laughs> and I'll totally allow it. <laughs> it'll or be it the could, or it could pick me up and put me back in my house. It, it's it's it will have a better chance of ha- at housing than most of Carter's generation. So good job. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's move on to this story. Um, oh yeah, we have a new story here. Yeah, um, a man, <laughs> a man makes man. a man man makes two point three million dollars off insider trading by snooping on his wife's remote work calls. Ooh. <laughs> Dude, there was a there was a whole stupid moonlighting episode about this where uh, this guy was cheating or this woman was cheating on her husband. And no, who was it? The guy was cheating on his wife, and he talks in his sleep, and he's a stockbroker. And he would, in, in, in the talking in his sleep, would be, oh, "I got to buy a hundred shares of Exxon. Oh, I got to sell my shares of so and so." And this woman was making a killing and continuing to sleep with him because he was uh, disclosing the secrets. That's <laughs> amazing. That's an amazing premise for a television episode. Yes, and apparently it's true to life, sort of. Sort of. Um, this yeah. guy made over two or one point six seven million dollars U.S. Wow! By listening to his wife's remote calls while she was working from home, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, on Thursday announced Tyler Loudon of Houston uh, accused him of taking advantage of his wife's work from home setup to obtain non-public information and uh, gamer. Garner, that looked like an M. Garner, yeah. Illegal profits. The agency said Loudon's wife, who had not been publicly named, was a uh, merger and acquisitions manager for the oil and gas company British Petroleum. Uh, she had been working to finalize the company's plans to acquire Travel Centers of America Incorporated, an Ohio-based full-service truck stop and travel center company. 
But before BP made the public announcement about the acquisition, Loudon, age 42, purchased 46,450 shares of Travel Center stock without his wife's knowledge. He's in huge trouble. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Well, she unfortunately was also in huge trouble, lost her job because of this. Yeah, that makes I, I could see that happening, but it's also like I feel for her. This is not it's not yeah. really her fault. Yeah, not deal. her fault, exactly. I mean, you know, you, you kinda gotta trust the person you live with not to yeah. spy on your calls and make money from it. She's Is loose. there anything that I know because at least in the past or maybe even now, Tina's dealt with some like sensitive stuff. Yeah, she does adult protective services, so I could listen in on her calls and figure out which elderly people to take advantage of. Got it. And say, all right, oh, this person has a big bank account and is easily is easily fooled by uh, <laughs> crypto scams. Great. Let me, <laughs> let me create my own NFT and send them. That would be bad. Send them the thing. Yeah. Uh, and Tina would have full right to, uh, to, to <laughs> divorce me from that. Well, as a result of this thing, this 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 stock of this thing he bought all those shares in jumped seventy one percent, which is a massive gain for him. Uh, he has now pled guilty to securities fraud and will probably go to prison. Yeah. So, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, we take our money very seriously in this country. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we do. more That's than a... actual criminal uh, things going on, but uh, not that yeah. this isn't criminal. But you know what I mean. We go after. Yeesh. Uh, yep. let's see. Here's a story we'll do damn real quick. Damn it, Zoom! Damn yeah. it, pandemic! D- damn it, damn it, work from home! <laughs> Dangle this carrot in front of me, damn it! Uh, here's a cool, interesting thing. This almost sounds like a Bobby thing. Um, sure. isolated for six months, scientists in Antarctica begin to develop their own accent. Um, uh, like the thing, sort of, except... Yeah. <laughs> not exactly it's, that. Instead of a Petri dish, it's an accent. That's right. What- says the uh, Antarctica is a very bleak, remote, and dark place during the winter, but a handful of people each year brave the conditions to live almost totally cut off from the rest of the world, and the experience uh, can change the way they actually speak. Uh, they say uh, the, the, the article's very long, but it basically goes into how 26 weeks of perpetual darkness and harsh, wet, harsh, harsh weather, having yeah. to work very closely with each other, see nobody else, travel nowhere, you can't go anywhere. You're you're just there. Eventually, new accents will emerge, and and a lot of it will be based on somebody came into the situation with, say, a British accent. Somebody else is there from the south, of, uh, it's you know, like from melange of all the different. Right. Uh, the it starts to emerge, and I love this concept because this is how yeah. sci- cool science fiction accents come up, like right. the world of Firefly. Or or, or, uh, or whatever. Uh, the Expanse is a great example of yeah. this, like the different accents that evolved from the oh the Belters, dude. Yeah, the Belters. Yes, I love that stuff. Yeah, Huge I fan of that too. thing. But to me, it's always been like science fiction. This this is, I guess, proving out that, that yeah, if you least, stay there long enough, part of you know, it is, wow, it's, it's cool, crazy. right? Super cool. Yeah. Would you uh, you get an opportunity to go uh, to to go visit Antarctica? But because of the way flights and stuff uh, are arranged, you have to spend a month there. Do you do it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean, it feels like a once-in-a-lifetime you know, thing. Right? It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, we can, we'd can. we love to bring you up, uh, you know, up to Antarctica. You can stay at the the, the Seward Station or whatever it is, the Andrew Bird <laughs> Station. and uh, But unfortunately, uh, the, flight, the next flight back out, the one we can get you on, wouldn't be for a month until a month later. Would you do it? I think I might. It sounds like a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Like, when, yeah. when else are you ever going to get to see it? As long as I could be there and not be told that there's very little food and water. You know what I mean? Like, I need to know that uh-huh. it's not going to be a yeah, nightmare. Yeah, I mean, you won't... Yeah, exactly. You'll you know you'll be uh, you'll be living in Fremen suits and drinking your own sweat and pee. But other than that, <laughs> then then I mean, sign Antarctica me up. is the world's biggest desert. That's so. true. It is. It's also um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a favorite horror movie location of mine. It is sure. It's what I like about this season. Uh, this recently just finished season of True Detective. I like that setting. I like it. I don't like cold, I don't like winter, and I don't like snow so much, but I like when a story is set in that setting. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. 30 Days of Night or whatever that was called, the vampire one that was set in the Arctic, The Thing, of oh, course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, any of those kinds of things, love that yeah. as a backdrop. Uh, what was the... Um, 
Oh, what was the Robin Williams? Wasn't that also Robin Williams? Uh, uh, Al Pacino. Oh, um, the one, the the paranoia. Um, no, what was that thing called? Uh, yeah, uh, the one with the. It's made by your it's by not, the guy no. made by yeah, Christopher Nolan movie. Uh, yeah, not one hour photo. No, it's <laughs> insomnia. 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 That's it. Yes. Yeah. It's also the name Thank of you, a. Jerry, uh, what do you call it? Stephen King book, I think. Oh, it's, really? It's not but based, unrelated. Not, unrelated, not based yeah. on the same story. Yeah. yeah. I really like that book. That book's great. Yeah. It's also tied into the Dark Tower, which I love. Oh, right. Well, what is it? I mean, all his books kind of are, but <laughs> that one is very explicitly. Like, at the end, especially, yeah. it's like, oh. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Like, big crossover. It's good, though. It's not, and then it's not really a spoiler because it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't, the story is its story, and then it's also a crossover. It's hard to explain. Uh, final note here, a man charged with allegedly stealing Subway sandwiches, uh, and growling at people in Morgantown. (laughs) Is this Pennsylvania? Yeah, I think so. Morgantown, Pennsylvania. Let's see. Let's say, I think it is. It's on a website called W Boy. I assume assume that's Virginia. Maybe West Virginia. Oh, is it West Virginia? I'm trying to remember. We, uh, Morgantown was a customer of ours and I went there and what the hell was it? (laughs) Uh, the Appalachian Times. Yeah. The the I'm town I'm trying to see if I made the mistake. Oh, I know. I'll go to weather. The if Hick- I go to this w, twelve W boy and tells me uh, where this is. The Holler Herald. The um, West Virginia, Morgantown, West Virginia. Okay, yep. it is West Virginia. Uh, none of those papers are real. I was making those up, everybody. Um, <laughs> let's move on to this. It says here, a man was charged with allegedly stealing these sandwiches and uh, threatening violence, growling at people in this town. Growling at people. Yep. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. The complaint was filed on February 20th when officers arrived. Witnesses <laughs> stated that David Clark, age 48, aren't they always, of Morgantown, entered the subway and went behind the counter and started to make and eat food. Make and eat food. Make and eat food. I need to make and eat food. (laughs) Uh, While Clark was behind the counter, staff at the subway told him to stop, but Clark responded by raising his fist in a threatening manner. Why does it say raise bracket ing? Probably um, probably because the testimony said he raised his fist in a threatening manner. Oh, so they got rid of the ED and replaced it with ING? With ING, because they're they're taking a direct quote from the thing. Okay. Yeah. Never understood quite how that worked when they do that. Yeah. Usually it's a... Because without uh, the ING, it's just, it's not even a word, <laughs> you know? Right. No, exactly. Anyway. But they wouldn't put raised, raising. Raising. <laughs> He started by raising his fist in a threatening manner and making threats and causing... Making threats and causing staff to causing flee. Causing staff to flee the restauranting in a fear of bodily harm, according to the right. complaint. Uh, officers located Clark outside the subway with an unpaid food with unpaid food in his mouth. <laughs> You've got unpaid food in your mouth. Drop the food. It's unpaid. Five, five dollar foot long of unpaid food. Yep. So now he's charged with robberies, sitting in jail, waiting for arraignment. So... Yeah. Well done, West Virginia. Wow. We're going to take a break. When we come back, our pal Bill Duran will be here. We're going to talk about making Yay. stuff. And uh, that'll be right after this song break. Brian, what'd you bring? I do so enjoy making stuff. And Bill is the best at making stuff. Hey, this is a brand new album. Uh, I'm sorry, brand new single, but it's uh, from an upcoming album. The album doesn't come out till April 19th. You've got some time to wait, but you can get this single right now. It's by a guy named Billy Morrison. And... Uh, uh, this guy is uh, this guy. This guy. Um, who did he used to play with? I know he. Uh, let's see. I guess it's not who he used to play with. It's who he's going to be playing with on this album. Some people you might have heard of: Ozzy Osbourne, Billy Idol, DMC, Al Jurgensen, Steve Vai, Steve Stevens, Linda Perry, Tommy Klufetos, John Five. Oh, John Five, great guitarist, and more. Um, this guy is uh, incredible talent. And uh, this is some rock and roll for you. Here's Billy Morrison from his upcoming album. Here is the song, Drowning. Let me make this real to you. Bring on the virgins. That's the doctor from the TV. And we've returned. Who was that one more time? Sure. That's Billy Morrison, two R's, one S. Billy Morrison, a brand new single 
uh, called Drowning from his upcoming solo album, The Morrison Project, which has all those people you heard me mention before, a lot of great talent, uh, going to be joining the already talented Billy Morrison on that album. That sounds like a hell of a group. Heck yeah. They may as well do We Are the World while they're all there, you know? That's right. There's a song called Crack Cocaine featuring Ozzy and Steve Stevens. Uh, let's see. Corey Taylor and Steve Vai joining for a song called Insight the Watch, Puppets on a String. Oh, Jeez. yeah, this looks like it'll be a really good, uh, really good album coming out from Billy Morris. Seems nice. All right, you guys, yeah. it's time for this right here. There's still something wrong, isn't there, Bill? <laughs> What's funny is there's never anything wrong when Bill comes on. I don't know why yeah, that no, clip says zero. that. But... Because he can make things right. That's right. Bill, make things right for us. How are you? What's going on? You do pretty great. Are you? We've been working on a lot of projects. We've been putting out a bunch of videos. Yeah, things that's good. Awesome. How's your 3D printer world uh, going? I know there's, uh, with that whole new project, sounds like things are kicking. Yeah, I've got a new project almost done that should be out in the next couple of days. It's really exciting. Nice. Um, I'll be working on that today. Uh, lots of little pieces, lots of moving Another parts. I'm very excited. Print and assemble. What's the, so the, the last one... Um, Oh man, I don't want I don't want you to give anything away. I and mean, you probably don't want to give okay. anything away. But what like uh magnets, springs, like what uh is there a hidden what's the hidden secret in oh, the new yeah. project that like, you're that you're building? I like this. Uh let's we'll just call this the there's two mechanisms in the new project. One of them is steering. Really? Steering. Yes. Ooh. Oh my gosh, you're making a car. I can't wait to see how this goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's getting Excellent. into it, oh, making it, making wait. the new EV, the punished props uh, EV12 or whatever you're going to call it. Very exciting. Yeah. Uh, no, mm -hmm. for whatever it's going to be, I can't I can't wait to 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 see. But it's uh, be fun. what'd you what'd you bring with you today? What are we talking about? I want to talk about some fan films. I uh, specifically a fan film, but I've had the opportunity to work on a bunch of short films, mm -hmm. like um, contributing props and costumes and whatnot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and. Uh, there's a new one getting made. My friend Zach Finfrock uh, is doing a new Fallout series. We got the new show coming out, and uh, he and his friends made a Fallout series uh, a little over 10 years ago called Nuka Break. Uh, and it was a big hit back then, and then they stopped making him, and now he wants to sort of continue the story for his character. So he's doing a one-off fan film from Fallout, and he sent a bunch of our props so that they could use them. Oh, oh cool. right, because you've done so many. You like done the Pip Boy and Nuka Cola I've, and all sorts yeah. of yes. Yeah. Several okay. Pip Boys, Nuka Cola bottles. We've yeah. got laser pistols. I've got a nuke launcher. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of stuff. Uh, but, know, what a treasure trove of props for this person's fan film. My gosh. And I've wow. I've forgotten several of them. There's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so uh but I am making something new. Well technically new. Uh, I'm making the Thirst Sapper, so it's a squirt gun that looks like a Nuka Cola squirt gun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I made one about six years ago. I 3D modeled it and 3D printed it for a friend of mine. She was doing the Nuka Girl costume, and I made the the squirt gun for her. Uh, but I printed another one back then for myself. I, mm -hmm. I wanted one for myself. And uh, on one of my tested trips, Norm and I started putting it together, but we also were trying to add squirt gun functionality to it Ooh, actual squirt squirting That's right yeah <laughs> um but we never finished it uh because there was a pandemic and i haven't been back there in a while mm. so i've had this like half finished kit sitting in my shop for like five or six years uh but it was the perfect thing for this fan film um zach's character is very interested in nuka cola so we thought we got to do the, the thirst zapper so I, I put it together uh we put a video out for it uh, on the whole construction, uh, which is fun because it's, it's different than the old, the old one. It's got the squirting functionality, uh, but I also put a lot more effort wow. into it. Let's see here. Uh, it was it's a little wild. Be tougher. I was gonna say it's got to be tougher to make something that um, can hold water, right? Right. Like, and, and is and is self-contained has sealing uh, is sealed enough to where it can have a little reservoir mm -hmm. of water. And I ended up just taking a, buying the smallest squirt gun I could find. And installing mm -hmm. the entire thing inside of my squirt gun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's yeah. great. Oh my God, what a great way to do it. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Look at that. I had to modify it a, a, quite a bit, but we got it to fit in there. Um, it's kind of wild returning to a project that you've had languishing for like five years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, yeah, in the video, you can even see that box has been sitting there for so long, it's got a proper label. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no yeah. kidding. Ooh, wow. I love the the. Uh, so, did you do you print these labels that you're now applying this um the new? Yeah, I've got a little, logo? a little. Cricket. Oh yeah, I've got a um industrial vinyl cutter for. It's like a cricket on steroids. Yeah. That's okay. so cool. Oh my gosh, it looks legit. Yeah. It totally does. Yeah. I, w- I would cover my whole house and shit like this. If I had <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, dude. Ooh, it looks so, so dainty, though, because the cola words are the, the cursive looks like if you're not careful, you're going to get like wrinkles in it and stuff and lumps. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's cool. All right. Um, I, I made some custom parts on the lathe for this. That was really fun. Um, and the, But the paint job is really what sets this whole thing off. So the red is airbrushed on there, and um, I got a really nice red. This is all Createx paints. They have tons of really good airbrush paints. It's a, mostly just this bright red, but I mix in a little pearlescent red uh, mm. to give it just a little bit of that like automotive shimmer. Yeah. But the secret sauce is the clear coat. This rattle can I got, it's uh, nasty stuff. You want to spray it outside. You, know, you want to wear a respirator. You don't want to breathe any of that stuff in. But it's catalyzed. You pop the bottom of it, a little button, and it puts a catalyst in the can, and then you mix it up, and then it, the clock is ticking. You have 48 hours to use the whole can. <laughs> but when you spray it, it sprays a perfect gloss coat that will fully cure in like two hours. It's not drying. Oh, wow. It's curing. It's got a chemical reaction. Weird. Uh, and it's solid. It's like it cures fast, and it's super glossy, and it's very durable. This ends, so up, this hit- ends up looking so solid state by the time you're done. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really good. Uh, and the the uh, shimmer and the paint loves that gloss. And it, it does. It looks like you've got a nice automotive finish on there. Wow. That's great. Look at that. And it actually squirts. It really does. And I, I'm asking for it back when they're done because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So what do they make? Are they making a full-on second film kind of thing or what are they yeah, doing? Yeah, another short film. Okay. Um, it's being filmed right now and it will come out sometime in April. A bunch of other people are helping out. Um, he's filming it down in LA. Mm. It's going to be really fun. He gets to explore the, the future of this character that they wrote like 13 years ago. Uh, and he finally gets his, his uh, squirt gun. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Zapper. I love it. I love it. Screw you, pandemic. Things come around. We get them done eventually. You know, you do. that's the attitude we should have. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's awesome, dude. Uh, go check it out, you guys. <laughs> so it's, cool. This thing is up there. The name of the video is It Really Squirts, which uh, <laughs> I don't know if I would search that willy nilly in different places, yeah, but, uh, uh, you know, I think Red Tube might have a whole category about that. They might. Yeah. I think you've got a you got a real uh, 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 SEO going here, though, with that title. Mm-hmm. So. That's right. You might get a whole new audience that's like. Where's the stepmom? Yeah, where where I don't I don't see the stepmom in this here video about this spurt gun. Um anyway, uh this is great as always. Bill always brings us uh something a little extra too. What do you got going? This yeah, week? a couple things. One, Emerald City Comic Con is this weekend. Yeah, uh Brittany and I will be there. I've got a panel on Friday morning. If anyone's there, come on by. We're doing a panel about turning our creative passion into a business. What? The bunch of my friends. It's gonna be really what? fun. Cool. Uh, and then we'll be in costume. Brittany and I will have our satisfactory costumes on one day and probably Ghostbusters the other. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Fun. Man, Excellent. that Ghostbusters thing, it's almost more than your Draugr outfit. You get a lot of mileage out of that thing. I really, yeah, and yeah. I will wear it a lot more. I got a, I got a second proton pack for Brit that I need to paint yeah. <laughs> yeah. to work on. I want to make, there's going to be new stuff in the new movie. I'll be doing Ghostbusters nice. cosplay until the heat death of the universe. Does it get its <laughs> Does it get its own stink bag, or is it the same stink bag you use for the? It's uh, a anyway? box. It's a box. Stink, stink box. box. Yeah. All right. yeah. Does yeah. the box have a fancy label on it? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Ooh, Brian just gave him an idea. Stink yeah. box. I, I think stink it's box. got a blue piece of painter tape with some markers <laughs> scrawled on it. Whoa! Okay. Don't be so fancy. Goodness yeah. gracious. Uh, well, Bill, it's always good to talk to you, dude. I'm mm-hmm. glad this is happening. Can't wait to see you in Vegas and. Uh, Oh, I wanted to share Zach's um, oh, yeah. GoFundMe. Oh, so yeah, yeah, funding, yeah. Funding the uh, the film with the GoFundMe. Uh, it's over there. If you look up Zach Finfrock, you'll find it. 
I didn't know GoFundMe uh, let you do stuff that wasn't like dire family medical stuff. That's interesting. They'll like, let you do apparently just about anything, including you paying request for anything expenses <laughs> if you're, yeah. you run afoul of the law. Yeah, I guess so. I've seen some yeah. pretty crazy things, but I didn't know. I don't know. I guess I just always assumed it was you nothing can, but that. You can come up with an elaborate ploy to take money that you're claiming to give to a homeless person and use it for mm -hmm. yourself with GoFundMe. That's you right. Sure can. Bill could do an OnlyFans where all he did was paint models. It doesn't, or, you know, or I make ceiling fans. That would be even better. <laughs> <laughs> I only do fans. See you later. Uh, well, Bill, thanks, dude. And uh, have a fantastic uh, rest of your week and month. And we'll see you soon. You got it. Bye, Bye now. Bye. See you, Bill. I'm going to that. I'm gonna add that GoFundMe video and then put the link to the GoFundMe underneath it on uh, quicktms.li. Oh, very nice. Don't forget to bookmark that, everybody. It's a great place to get the latest of what we talked about on the show. Any freaking link I can put up there, and I need to take down registration for the pond until we're ready to do another one. Uh, we got a note here, just a very brief one from Seth. This was a text. Seth, okay. Yeah, right. 801-471-0462. He says, I did a website for a pet pig farm called rossmillfarm.com. They are great animals. <laughs> says that Seth. So this is about, we were talking about mini pigs or whatever, micro pigs. Yeah. Whatever oh yeah, ones. micro pigs, yeah. And I guess the pot belly pigs. But but, this, but isn't the whole story is that these don't actually exist? There's no such thing as a, a small pig? They're actually just baby pigs and they they're grow up to be fat? They're just pigs that grow up to be big pigs? Yeah. And it, everyone thinks when they get one, they're like, oh, it's going to stay small forever like the size of a cat. Mm -mm. No, uh-uh. No, pigs, this, pigs is a lovely, this is a lovely website. Brian, you get some competition here. Look we got to take a look here. Oh, there's so many people who do better websites than me. I won't be. I, I'm... I am not under the impression that, uh, that, oh, that is nice. That's very nice. I want uh, to go here. Look at this place. I know. So you guys don't know this about me. I don't know if I've said it before. Maybe Brian can relate, but I am kind of a, I want one of two things in the extreme. I either want to live in a penthouse apartment in the biggest city ever and on the top floor in a big, beautiful, sprawling apartment. And I want to live right in the center of, of, a, of downtown. I either want that. Or I want to live way out in the middle of nowhere in a farm type situation like mm. this. I don't, everything in between is fine. That's where I'm at now. But if yeah, I could yeah. go to be, if I could choose, it would be one of those two extremes and it would be hard for me yeah. to choose. No, nope. you know? New York is where I'd rather stay. I get allergic smelling hay. I just adore a penthouse view. Mm. So, Scott, I love you, but give me Park Avenue. All right, you get Park Avenue. I'll take the farm upstate. All right, you and can I'll, take Green Acres. I'll take. Uh, I'll, I'll take come Manhattan. visit though. I'll come visit, and you'll sneeze because my clothes will smell like pigs and hay. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. There's something about the simple life of just like go out and feed the pigs that I that attracts yeah. me. I like it. No, I need. I need. I want a. Uh, I want a coffee, a mom and pop coffee shop that I can walk to, but I want a pizza place. I want a burger place also that are uh, within walking distance as well. So, yeah. No, these are all, these are good creature comforts. I, I, I sign up for your newsletter. I think it's out <laughs> If you guys have a thought <laughs> or. Just says, I feel like a farm would grow Scott out. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't you mind. Know, all those, all those animals come with poop, Scott. They and, do, uh, but they're, it's a different kind of poop. It's like a. I don't know. There, it's there's a there's something about it. I can't explain it. Every time I go sure. like to a farm, I feel at home there. I think sure. I could. I think I could do it. But I'm not. I'm not See, saying I want. We, need. we I, need a listener with a farm to say, "Come live at our farm for a month. Bring your bring your computer, your microphone. We'll do. You know, you can do TMS remotely. Okay. And let's then do come it. live on a farm for a month. Let's I think, do it. Uh, Somebody out there in the middle of nowhere want to give me a call? I prefer yeah, mountains, so. but if it's you know, it's if it's flat prairie land, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Well, those good old mountain farms. Yeah. Uh, what are them mountain, what are them, they're mountain <laughs> farms? I mean, more like surrounded by, not in the mountains. Gotcha. Okay. Those, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, like. Take, like uh, a valley farm. Right? Yeah. Like you want to. Yeah. yeah hidden valley you know. farms is where you really want to live. <laughs> There's a ton of it between me and St. George, somewhere in there. Or, or sure. it doesn't have to be Utah, but something like that. Uh, yeah. If anyone asks about <laughs> Scott, Scott, we'll say. live on a farm upstate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are dorks. Um, all right, 801-471-0462 is where we got that from Seth. If you'd like to be like Seth and do that, that'd be fine. If you want anything else, you can find it at frogpants.com slash TMF. Link, uh, TMF. 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 We got a whole new show. Barcelona. 
Um, <laughs> that's where all our stuff is. All of it is linked there, including uh, to, uh, stuff to uh, VVS TMS Vegas and all that. All of it. So go get there and be there and have it. Uh, that's it for the show. Brian, let's get out of here. We got to do a song, though. What do you got? Well, okay. This one's going out to Thomas from Missouri. Didn't uh, get to, we had a couple birthdays yesterday, so this one got pushed to today. Hi, Scott and Brian. So it's my 52nd birthday on February 26th, but feel free to play this request on any day. As for what song to play, whatever the cover master feels like playing is good with me. Still enjoying the show, guys. You keep making them, and I'll keep watching them. Oh. Signed, Thomas from Missouri. You know what that means. Happy birthday. That's the age you're at, dude. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, dude. Sorry about that. Uh, this is what I've had. Like, I have a folder where I put songs that um, uh, that don't have a request tied to them, but I'd love to fit onto a put onto the TMS at some point because I think they're so good. This one is that good. This is a band called the Hot Sardines from an album called <laughs> French Fries and Champagne. Okay. All of that. Yeah, it's, it's that's a that's the, a meal I'll skip. Thank you so much. That's the buffet at the El Cortez, by the way. Is, yeah. is everything I just described. Uh, this is a cover of the song by the late great Robert Palmer. Came out in 2016. It's a cover of "Addicted to Love." Get more at frogpants.com. How many languages do you speak? Uh, one, one, fl- <laughs> one fluently. A fluent, one single fluent.